guys, it's Sherry and Loki. Today we are going to have some super paper crafting fun. Isn't that right? Stay tuned. my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by because today we are going to have some super duper paper crafting fun. But first I want to thank everyone because if you've seen a recent community post that I put out, my channel has now reached 100,000 subscribers and I truly would not be able to do that without you guys. So I am planning some type of a celebratory giveaway but I don't know what it is yet but I'm working on it. But 100,000 subscribers, what an awesome way to celebrate my upcoming three year anniversary on YouTube. So be on the lookout for that upcoming giveaway. So today we're going to make a super awesome back to school craft. Doesn't mean you have to use it for back to school because if you don't have any school age littles around you or young adults in college, this is a great idea to make it just for yourself or to make it to sell at a craft fair. And here's what I'm talking about. We're going to make this stinking cute pencil case. So you can use your regular number two pencils in here or your colored pencils, your art pencils, pens, whatever you want to put in here. Or you don't have to use it as a pencil box at all. You can place anything in here that you want. So y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here is a closer look at this awesome pencil case that we're going to be making. I dressed mine up in a very feminine way, but you can make these using any paper and dress it however you want, but I decided to add just a little bit of dressiness to this one. And when you open it, you can see that I just kept the floral theme going because I wanted this to be crazy feminine, and I think that it is. And on the inside, I have pens in mine, but this will actually hold you know, your pencils, your colored markers, your crayons, whatever you want to put inside. So here's what we're going to need to make it. This is going to be a chipboard project because we definitely want that sturdiness. And I am using a medium weight chipboard and I have two pieces that measure one and seven eighths by two, one piece that measures one and five eighths by nine and four pieces that measure two by nine. And the paper that I'm using for today's project is from Photoplay and it is from the Bell Fleur collection by Becky Fleck or Fleek. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But if you're looking for this item, the SKU is 924-3659267. And what you're going to need are two pieces of 12 by 12. So I have chosen these two papers. This will be the outside and this will be the inside liner as well as the side pieces. So here is how we're going to lay out our chipboard pieces. I'm going to take the piece that is one and five eighths by nine and place it. And I'll take my remaining two by nine pieces and place them. And this is how the box will be laid out. So these two pieces here at the top, that will be the top of the box and this will be the fold over flap. So I am going to be using magnets to close my box. If you want to use magnets, you want to place them now. So I have already placed tape on this front piece here and I am going to take two of my magnets and I'm just going to place them like that. And then I can just flip that over and then I'm just going to slide it over just like that. I'm not going to remove this because I'm just gonna fold it over and it's going to get covered anyway once I put down that liner piece. So I'm going to go ahead and place this piece down. Then I'll place the rest of my two by nine inch pieces down, giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. And I'm going to keep placing these down. And then I'm just going to turn this around so I can see it from this angle. And 
And then I'll flip it over and I'm just going to use my big old spatula to get everything nice and stuck. And then I'm just going to trim away some of this excess. And if you think that you have a paper that might crack, go ahead and take your stylus or your bone folder, whatever you're using, and just go around your chipboard. So take that stylus, press it into, against the chipboard, and then press it down and go all the way around. This might not stop the cracking from happening, but it might help to minimize it. So I'm also going to go along the insides as well. Now this paper has not had a tendency to crack, but I'm just demoing for you how I would actually do this if I had a paper that I thought might crack. So now that I've scored around all the pieces, I'm just going to stand this up and get this ready to be folded over. I'm going to take my finger blade and we're going to miter those edges. And basically all we're doing is creating a little cut in. We're making sure that we leave a little bit of paper there so that when we fold over, we have a nice crisp professional corner. And there's my last one. So now I'm going to bring in my tape runner because I can actually use my tape runner for this piece. And the reason why I can is because I'm going to be folding this over and this will be sandwiched between my layer piece and the chipboard. So I don't have to worry about it coming undone at all. So I'm just adding my tape to all four sides. Now we're going to take this and we're just going to fold it over. Then we'll use our big old spatula or bone folder, whatever you use to make sure that we have a nice stick. So I'll just go back over this, getting everything nice and stuck. And I love this paper, I think it's just so pretty. So when we fold this, this flap here is the top and it's going to go over just like that. So now we need to place the second set of magnets. So I'm going to take my magnet and let it catch. So now that I have my magnet down, I'm going to take some glue, place some glue on that magnet, and then I'm going to bring this piece over so that I can figure out where my magnet positioning needs to be. So all I'm doing is folding it over. When I have it where I want it, I want to make sure that those sides are nice and square. When I have that, I'll just press down on those magnets and I'll get my glue positions right there. So now I can take these magnets and just place them down in the glue. And then I'm just going to take a piece of tape and put that tape over the top. And I'll check it one more time just to make sure that I have a good placement on this, and I do. So now I can just lift this. So now we need to place our liner piece. I'll go ahead and peel away this tape backer. And guys, use whatever tape it is that you have and has been working for you. Um, the tapes that I use are not necessarily tapes that you have to have. If you have a tape that has been working, go ahead and continue to use that. Uh, don't go out and buy something extra just because I'm, I might be using something different from what you have. So I am just placing down my tape and I'm going from top to bottom. And basically what I'm trying to do is cover the chipboard. So we'll put down our last one. And I'm going to go ahead and peel away those backers. 
and I am going to set this to the side, bring in my trimmer, and I'm going to take this piece and we are going to trim it down to nine and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And then make sure that you save these pieces because we'll use them to cover the side pieces. So I'm going to take my tape and you can use a thinner tape if you want. My wide tape just happens to be out. So I am going to place that tape on all four edges. So with the tape coverage that I have on the chipboard and the tape coverage that I'm putting down on all four corners, we will have edge to edge adhesive coverage. Now I prefer not to use glue when I'm using large pieces of chipboard because you might have some occasional warping. So I tend to use tape, but if you want to use glue, you can. So I'm going to take my big old spatula and we're going to get that nice and stuck. Then I'm going to flip this over and trim away that excess. So now I'll lift these tape backers. So I'm going to bring in this piece and I want to make sure that when I put my liner down, I'm putting it down so that I really have a lot of coverage where the magnet sits. So I have it right there at the top and I'll go ahead and place that bring in my big old spatula. I'm going to make sure that I get that top nice and stuck. And then I'll go around getting everything nice and stuck. So now I'll take my big old spatula and simply start to define those spines. So I'm taking my spatula, going into the groove of that spine and I'm making sure that when I am using my big old spatula, I am creating a nice spine so that when I take this and fold it over, I'll have a nice catch to this. So now we're going to take this, set it to the side, and we're going to do those side pieces. So we're going to bring in the scrap pieces that we had. So when you take your side piece, Make sure that when you're putting it down, because we're going to do a fold over, you're putting it down so that the two inch side is going this way so that we can fold over this way and have that top covered. So I am going to take my glue. I'm going to place glue on my two one and seven eighths by two inch pieces. I'm going to put that down, get it nice and stuck. Then I'm going to take my finger blade and trim. So when I'm trimming away that excess, when I get to the end of the chipboard, I'll flare out. And the reason why I flare out is because when you're doing a fold over like this, sometimes we don't get it exact and you want to give yourself a little buffer that you can then go back and trim away. So now I can take my glue, place my glue on this side We can take this piece, stand it up, fold it over, and because I did that flare, I have this buffer space here that I can remove, and I know that I have full coverage on the opposite side of this. And so now front and back, I have this covered. So now I'll bring in my second piece, place my glue, making sure that when I put it down, I'm putting it down so that the two inch side is running this way because I'll be folding over that top. And now I'll place the rest of my glue so before I place that glue, I should have trimmed away 
the excess, but it's not too late. We'll go ahead and do that now. So I will go up to that point and then I flare out. So now I can take this, fold it over, use my big old spatula to make sure everything is nice and stuck. And then I'll peel away my excess. And so now we have our two side pieces and what we're going to do is we're going to take those side pieces and we're going to place them in where the front of the box is and then we'll bring up the back and what you want to make sure of, you want to make sure that you have a nice even fit around the sides, you don't have any big gaps and we're going to use glue to seal this. So I'm going to take my glue and you're going to have three raw edges on your chipboard and that's where you're going to place your glue. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue along these three raw edges. And we're going to place this down. And this is a technique that you guys have seen me use many, many times when I'm working with chipboard. So the way that I'm going to do this is I am going to come in about an eighth of an inch. I'll bring up the front while pressing down and then I'll bring up the back while pressing down. I'll press down from the top and I'll press in from the side, but I'm going to give this just a moment to set up and I'll be right back. And so to help hold it in place while it's drying, I'm just going to take a piece of washi and just use it as a clamp. So I'm bringing that washi around from the front to the back and we're just going to leave it there and it's acting as a clamp and holding that in place so that I can work on the other side. So I am going to take my glue, place glue on the three raw edges of that chipboard, and then we'll put this one down just as we did the first one. So again, I'll place it in. I'll go in about an eighth of an inch I'll bring up that front and push in the back. We'll get this straightened out. And I'll press down and press in on the sides at the same time. So I'm just pressing down and pressing in on the sides. And then I'll take another piece of washi, place it down and pull this around nice and tight. So that will hold that in place while that glue is drying. So now I can close this. All right, y'all, so while this is drying, we're going to go ahead and just do some very light decorating. I have this awesome crinkle seam binding that I bought based on the recommendation from Robin. And I'll have Robin's channel linked below, but she showed it on her channel. I couldn't wait to order it, and y'all, I was not disappointed. So go over to Robin's channel and check out the preview of all of the beautiful colors of this seam binding because you will be so thrilled. So I am going to take my hot glue gun and I'm just going to lay down a little bit of glue because I'm not going to do anything overly elaborate. I'm just going to place that in the glue and then I'll bring this piece up and I'm adding just a little more glue and I'm basically just going to create a little series of loops that'll act as a bit of greenery for me to lay down my um, flowers. So I'm going to place one more drop of glue right there. And then I'll take this piece and I'm going to loop it in right there. And then I'm going to take these little paper flowers that I have, they're already pre-made, so I'm not making these, and I'm just going to put them in the greenery. And I'm going to add one right there. I'm going to add just a little bit of glue to that. And I'll take it and I just want to lay that down. I'm 
going to use my scissors and peel off some of that crinkle. Then I'm going to take my little sentiment that says queen for a day and we're going to put that right in there and I'm going to loop it around. So I'm going to take just a little bit of glue, place that glue there, place some glue right there, tuck that in and get it stuck. And then I'll take this piece and I'm just going to tuck it around right there. So again, I didn't do anything overly elaborate. I just added some of that crinkled seam binding, my little sentiment, and a few flowers. And I think I'm going to take just one more flower and place it right there because I think this cluster looks better in threes. So now I should be able to open this. And so now I have peeled away that washi tape. I'm going to open the top so that you can see the inside and you can see that the glue is still drying, but everything looks so great on this little project. I am going to bring that first one back in, close this one, so you can see how beautiful these really are. So when finished, you're going to have a case that measures nine by two by two. And this will hold a whole bunch of pencils of any type or other things that you might want to put in here instead of pencils. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this stinking cute project. If you have, please hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.